This is it. This is episode 520 of No Laugh Track Podcast here in Minneapolis, Minnesota at Acme Comedy Company. Most importantly, it is episode one of the week, talking Crash and Burn with, uh, I think last year I called Tim Slagle the godfather of Crash and Burn. <laughs> I'm sticking with that because it fits. That's fine. It fits. Father... Father Crash and Burn. That's fine. As that's it my, would be. My little baby. Yeah, that's right. That's it's right. actually, it's funny because I always tell the comics, I say, you know, I'll, I'll probably pop in on, you know, on, on your set sometime. You'll see yeah. me show up in the club because I, I love to see the bits make it into your act. Yeah. Because ki- I kind of look at them as my godchildren, the, the, bits, the, bits, that are, the bits that are written here. <laughs> yeah, oh, I li- you've never said that to me. I love that. Yeah. I love that. The other voice, the other person face yeah. you're seeing here is Liz Mealy, who was Hi. on this podcast a little, a little over two years ago. Yeah, yeah when things were uh, up in the air. Are we coming back? I don't know. I can't <laughs> feel it. I don't understand. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 2021 was a mystery, but here yeah. we're back in 2023. Uh, it is what day? Hmm, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Dave, the fourth day of Crash and Burn. I yeah, guess. Yeah, we're not even halfway through. That's the weird thing. It seems like we've been at this for so long. We're not even half through, halfway through the show. So we've only done three. Well, yeah. that's a good. Yeah, that's right. Four to go. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So uh, let's see. How should we start this, Liz? Obviously, this is your first time doing Crash and Burn. How did as a, the as a fetus? <laughs> as a fetus yeah. how was this presented to you to come here this week and do this i feel like i was lied to um <laughs> we've heard that before yeah, i feel uh manipulated and lied to um this is actually a cry for help um no i'm d- tim knows this i'm genuinely happy to be here and very excited i was presented a- and, and this i was recommended by both i think by carmen lynch and adrian yeah Aluigi. they both they both mentioned so those are know. those are i mean also manipulative because those are my two best friends um but <laughs> but genuinely, um, they had a great time. They, n- I'm a writer. Like I'm known in, in my community, let alone my friends. Like writing is my favorite thing. I love working on new jokes. I truly, somebody could be like, everybody in your family died, and then I would work on a new joke, and I'd be like, I did that for them. Like they'll, they're proud of me. Like I, l- <laughs> like it takes me. I've had some of the worst days, and if I had a new joke work, I'm like da 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 da. Like it's just, it is my happy place. And I, tr- I don't know if I told you, this, I have trouble working on more than five minutes at a time. It, I have a bad memory, and I get easily overwhelmed, and this is probably the most new stuff I've worked on. And, w- again, in New York, we'll have new material nights, but there's no opportunity like this where if I try it at a new material night on a Monday, the next time I'm able to try it, who who knows, maybe a bar show a couple days later. Maybe when I headline, I'll always do some new material at the end. But even that, I try to have some structure. It's very rare that I just talk out of my butt and then consistently work on Like, to be able to polish – even five minutes in a week, let alone 20 minutes, is a rare gift. If you and could talk out your butt, I know some guys that would book you. Oh, no, 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 no. I, mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I learned it from Ace Ventura. Um, but but it, it to me, this is truly an opportunity. And it, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that I, I know I, would, I can utilize. And that I was actually telling my boyfriend, I was like, my special, I just taped my special two weeks ago. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, and, and I was already, it was done in April, but I it's really hard to get people to come out in the summer, and the venue I wanted, it wasn't happening until September, so I basically kind of, you know, honed it a little bit, but it was done, and I started working on new stuff, so I already have 20 minutes of new stuff, and then I was like, if I do this week and I get another 20 minutes, that means before my special comes out, I already have 40 minutes, and then I'm just better than everybody, and that's all I need, <laughs> like, that's all I want, right? Even if nobody acknowledges it, I know that I'm a hero. Like, it's just so, I just think that's so cool. Like, I'm just such a dork about writing that I'm just excited. I've been, I don't know if I've ever asked this in all the years we've been doing, this is the 12th uh, edition. 12th. I don't know if we've said this, the 12th edition of Crash and, Crash and Burn, and I've done quite a few of these podcasts, and uh, I don't know if I've ever asked this before. Uh, going back to the beginning of your careers, how long did it take to get 20 minutes back then? Like, how many, was it years? Was it months? How long did it take you to get 20 minutes? Then you're just doing 20, you're trying to get 20 minutes strong in a week right now. How long did it take at the beginning? 20 minutes that I w- was proud of? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. About 20 years. <laughs> 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 the stuff I was doing in the beginning, I was pretty ashamed of. Cause, but, I mean, it was, uh, uh, back then, you, you just gather and act up really quick and you can go on the road. You know, I yeah. was, I was uh, three years from my first time picking up a, nu- a mic to going pro. Yeah. Okay. So I was not. I was not ready to be a pro, but th- th- there was so much much more work than comics. It was a. Uh, uh, it was the golden age. 
Yeah, and you can kind of yeah. grow because I think you grow faster with a real audience, even yeah. if it's scarier and not fair to the audience. Oh, yeah. totally not fair to <laughs> the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm still waiting for lawsuits for people yeah, to want yeah, their yeah, money yeah, back yeah, for a show yeah, they yeah. saw in 1983. <laughs> 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 Hopefully, the statute of limitations. Yeah, yeah. Is no <laughs> refunds after a decade. <laughs> yeah, I. It's funny you ask that because I. It's just like you don't know because like that first five minutes is like what you really want. Like you just want a solid five minutes. You can work most like rooms if you have a solid 10 and then you can host if you have at least 20 i don't know man like i would say probably a couple of years but good good is so arbitrary in the mind of somebody that's that's younger um i think more of what i was focused on for me was that that first 45 and it's funny i had that first 45 maybe in like six years or whatever but i would show nobody you know in the beginning, it you just don't know if the idea is good, and you don't know when it's polished, and you don't know when it's done. I think the difference between, you know, the first couple of years and twenty years in for me is that, like, I have a joke that's like parts of it are working it, but the line I thought would work the most isn't working. Even if I drop it, it's whatever. But I know at the end of this week, let alone whenever I decide, these will all be polished jokes. I have faith that I have enough skills and I can work things around. That it'll get where before it'd be like I don't think that's ever gonna be good or I don't have the ability to make it good. Yeah. And now I can tell you that if I want something to work, I will find out. Even if it takes six months, I'll figure out a way to make it work. For me, a bit has never been done. I'm always I'm always thinking of new little twists and tweaks I can put. It, I, there's stuff I get bored with. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the closest to, to getting done is just I just don't want to do that. One. Okay. I don't say yeah. that one anymore, but I don't think I've ever finished a bit. See, and, and I have asked many times on this podcast, asked people like when they're ready to record specials, like why, how did you know now is, is uh, instead of just, you know, like, well, I could work on this six more months. I could work on this another year. And a lot of the answers is I, you just have to make a point where you're going to move on. Right. Well, I think boredom is really what it is like you because to me, I've noticed that if I overdo it, I'm I'm now saying words on stage as opposed to performing them. And even if it goes well, even if you have a great time. I'm not having a good time, which is already a problem, but also I, I want to look back on it and see my passion and my enthusiasm. And when that starts to fade, it's, it, it's, it, we have to, so like, it's never going to be perfect because I don't write this fast, although 40 minutes in a couple of months, well, maybe this is what it is. But, but for the most part, the joke I wrote at the beginning of the year, that's still going to be in that special it's a little, there's a little less passion there, but I could add something to it. Like, you know, I can add tags or I can put it in a different place or like some, now there's a callback and I could do stuff to spice it up to be more excited. Oh, sure. Uh, Come on in. Yeah. Um, but, but um, to me, it's when I start, start to get bored, but it's really like, I, I try to work on it as quickly as possible because I, I'm very personal. I'm presenting who I am this year to sure. the world. And when it starts to shift, when I start to be like, oh, I've grown a little bit, or I don't feel that way anymore, or whatever. Like, uh, am I proud of the jokes I did 10 years ago? I am, but I'm also not that person anymore, yeah. literally, as a person and a comic. And I just want to keep presenting the new version of myself. So the stuff that you brought out on Tuesday night that you've been working on this week, where, how long does that stuff go back? To? Like, Was it in a notebook? Was it on your phone? Where Where is the stuff been that you brought out Tuesday to start with this week? Um, one was like an anecdote, which I like appreciate that he was just like, you can't have ever had said it on stage, but if it's an anecdote, so like the sky priority, uh, getting $30 back is literally like, I did call up my dad an hour later, just like, ah, and then I told my friend like in a voice memo, like a four minute voice, pretty much probably the joke. I was like, and then I did this and then I did that. And then I did end up telling this guy that's now my boyfriend, um, weeks later about it. So it was just a thing that I know I should be embarrassed about, but I was absurd. Like it, like the same way a new joke will make my day that made my day. Like, cause I had been chasing it for weeks and I knew what I was doing was yeah. psychopathic. <laughs> but it made me, when I got it, I was like, a new, like, it was just like, I proved something to myself. You know what's, you know what's so funny about it. And I, I guess we probably, for the audience, we probably have to t t give, get a little what the bit is, yeah. is uh, uh, she got screwed out of $30 from the airlines and she spent, an inordinate amount of time getting that thirty. Oh yeah, back. and I missed that line. I forgot to say it last night because I think it's so important. I spent probably two hundred and fifty dollars of man hours to make thirty dollars back. That I was d deserved. Like I'm, I was in the right, but it was 
do I have more time than the average person? Sure. But was it the right use of my time? Do I need that $30? Absolutely not. What was really funny, though, <laughs> is when, you, when I heard, heard you do that bit, it reminded me that, uh, that I got a Roku, a new Roku, mm-hmm. and uh, it was supposed to be a, a sale price, $30 off. Yeah, <laughs> Ironically, yeah. it's actually yeah, $30 yeah, yeah. off. And when I went through all the procedure and, and got it, I didn't get that $30 discount. And now knowing and about you and coupons, that must have <laughs> ruined your day. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I've been – it's like, oh, uh, you have to wait till it shows up on your billing before you are yeah, allowed. Yeah, yeah, Sa- same, yeah. same same stuff, same thing. And uh, when I saw your bit, it's like, oh, man, I was supposed to call him back in 30 days. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm getting that 30 bucks. Dude, I'm a, I'm a psychopath. Like, I wonder how many people in the audience are like, oh, this is – yes, I lost my 20 on that shit. The guy came up to me last night to be like, I was supposed to get Comfort Plus, and I didn't, and da 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 And it's what I've learned about who my fan base is, like, because I have a lot of older male fans that – love my work like genuinely quoting jokes have all my albums and I couldn't figure out for a while and then I was having coffee with my dad and he was telling me about something about UPS and just complaining and my eyes got wide and I was like oh my god I'm my father I'm a 70 year old man oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> I look like this but I was raised by my dad I am my dad I just look like this so whether I'm talking about makeup cats or UPS I am I am a I am a man that was born in the fifties. Like I I I am he just literally downloaded his crazy onto me. And then my mom's very ranty, so my dad is like very logical. Like I did the right thing. Because my parents are good people. I did the right thing, I should be treated right, but that's not how the world works. And I think there's a lot of especially white men that are like but I did what I was supposed to do. And everybody, and everybody, like anybody, a mor- minority, a woman, a p- person of color is like, yeah, that's never how it worked out. But men were like, but no, it used to work that way. And now we're pissed about it. So I have this kind of white male, like, but I did what I was supposed to do. This is, this is garbage. Why am I not being treated perfectly? So I have that. <laughs> and I think that's in there. But also my mom's very ranty. And Whatever happened to customer service? Exactly. I am. I am. <laughs> but like my mom is, yeah. my mom is Amazing. ranty. So like my parents picked me up from uh, the airport. Like I was flying into their airport like maybe a year ago. And my parents picked me up. And my mom was just like, we almost died because your father almost killed us. And literally the whole time they picked me up, my mom is complaining about my dad and how she almost murdered us. And it just gets ramped up and ripped and more exaggerated and more exaggerated. I was like, oh, I'm my father with my mom's storytelling. And it's crazy that I was like, and it's funny because my dad is like, I'm not like that. And my mom is like, oh, I really relate to you. Like my dad <laughs> can't see it. But my mom is like, oh, yeah, I see that. So I think I th- I think in general, I don't know what the original question is because I had coffee with Tommy Ry- Ryman and it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I told he had me do radio and I was like, I'll do radio at the crack acid dawn if you bring me a coffee, but you'll also regret bringing me a coffee because <laughs> I'll be psycho. Um, well, it was great. I, easiest radio I've ever done. Oh, yeah. good. I just had to sit there. Hey. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> Not so bad. I want to ask about the. Uh, so I was at the show last night, but then I bailed right away uh, and did not stick around for the writing session. I want to know how that went. It was great. Yeah. It was a, yeah. It was one of the best ones. It was. It, it, good it, 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 it was the first time. It was the first time that uh, 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 I think you know myself and and I know Liz as well. Uh, we both had stuff that we we know should be working. But we don't didn't know why, and it was we were actually able to hear the audience. They actually gave us their perspective on those bits, and we might be able to get them to work tonight. It was really that helpful because I literally because like we have our ideas, but our ideas are in a com- ours is like a from a writing perspective, and like some of it was like oh you just said it too fast or oh I didn't hear you or oh I didn't put that together and like. It was, j- or, or even some of their suggestions, I was huh. just like, oh, that's a logical suggestion that I was trying to go in a fantasy world. And you're like, please come to reality. Like, we were. So it was, it was really, and these are people that genuinely want you to win. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Because it's not the whole audience, is what, what, maybe 15 people? 20, 15, 20, 20, 20 yeah. It, they were awesome, though. And they were like really invested. And it was, it was really, it was really cool. Like, it was just, and even if, because my favorite part about giving suggestions is even when they're not logical, you just start riffing and being stupid. Yeah. And they were just fun to riff and be stupid with. Like it that was one silly. woman, that one woman, she was sitting right there. I have yeah. no idea what her name is, but she's been here 
every year for the for the after oh, show. Oh, that's so cool. Every year that we've done the after show on stage, she's been here for it. That's awesome. And some of them were just giving facts, which was kind of cool, where they would just be like, just just so you know, the migrating bird. You know what? You know what? I turned that into a line this morning. Oh, good. This is because you guys were saying, well, why don't they migrate? It's like, duh, that's perfect. Yeah. It's like, you know, somebody last night said, that, well, they're not endangered. They're just on the Migratory Species Act. Why? They don't migrate. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. stay there all damn winter now. Yeah. <laughs> that's you. So uh, Tim's been working on a bit about uh, geese. Yep. Last night hit hard. Yeah. I yeah. thought it hit yeah. really riffing. hard. I was actually riffing last night. It was. I went totally off script. No, it was really fun. Yeah. And I think that's. I can't wait to look at it and see where, why. <laughs> people laughed. Interesting. <laughs> okay. You, you also just don't, because, like, if I do some of these, like, new material nights in the city, like, it's five minutes, it's ten minutes. Like, there's very rare where you can, like, I probably riffed more than I ever would because, it, like, A, I'm trying to fill up time, but B, I'll have stuff written, but also I'm finding it on stage, and sometimes you just need the time to get lost. And that's what I kind of saw with the geese bit he had, is he's like, now we have time to talk about poop. Now we have time <laughs> to talk about migration. <laughs> Where before, it's like the idea is like why it's just like this one one liner that maybe you get two lines out of. And because he's just each night letting it expand, because eventually it'll be, let's say it's three minutes, and then it, when you pare it down, it'll be two. You just take the best of, yep. kind of. Yep. But you need to kind of like go too far to then pare it back down. Just like your thing is like, I'm not a painter, I'm a whittler. Like, you know what I mean? Or a sculptor. sculptor. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah, but just from a logical place, that is what we do, is yeah. that, that you take you take a block and you chip down, and you're like, okay, now that's a that's like a like a like a fountain. Yeah, we chip away, we don't add color. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's a, we're sculptors, not yeah. painters. I was so impressed. Uh, so, you know, I came here, I was here Tuesday, couldn't make it Wednesday, and then was here last night, and uh, I noticed there were some jokes from people that there really wasn't much change at all. Others, I, I noticed, were completely dropped. Others uh, were changed. I thought, uh, you know, it was a little bit of everything, which is kind of how this week is supposed to go, right? Yeah. Like some hit really good Tuesday, and there were no changes, not just from you guys, but, you know, the oh. other two oh, participants it as it well. It's there. Right? Um, the thing that really stood out to me the first night is how many of you, let's say three out of four, I didn't even know when the light went off because you just, it was like, you know, there's been a lot of years where that last maybe two minutes of someone's set, you're like, oh, they're out of stuff. They, yeah. It's obvious just how the way they're s scrambling, <laughs> or they're admitting it. That was that was Liz on Wednesday. Oh, and I wasn't <laughs> here wasn't, Wednesday. She wasn't out. She wasn't out of stuff. I she just, still I'm had too, more stuff. All my stuff is like my my but shortest she, joke is three minutes. Yeah, and she's I have used to New York seconds. where the light comes on. You got to get the heck out of there. And yeah. I was, it, I was like panicking, but it was it's. But it looked the audience thought she ran out of stuff. Yeah, yeah. no, no so kidding. Was, so it was really you know it, it, she had more stuff, but it was really comical. They started laughing because. She yeah, because I didn't because I also didn't want to like be an asshole because I was like all my stuff is so long and I had three different long bits, but I had forty five seconds. And I was like, <sighs> yeah, I, I, I never I never made clear that you have permission to run the light. You don't have to. Yeah, I just you, you, you need to go to the light goes, but you, yeah. can, you can run the light. Yeah, I've seen both. Th yeah. Like in last night, there were basically almost all of you were like the light went and were like, well, I got to finish this. I'm just going to yeah. keep going. Yeah, it's yeah, not I, I told everybody. Good. Yeah, I, like I told everybody it's OK to run the light as long. as. But you I go. have 20 years of being like punished. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know, I, I know. It's really hard. It's really hard <laughs> to no, turn I it off. I saw the light and I was like, bye. Dad's going to yell at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Hey, one thing I, I, I wanted to say yes. this, too, is, is one thing that's really nice about this format is I, I, if if something you because you always want to end on a laugh. Even if so, the joke you told is not funny, you still want to get a laugh out of milk a laugh out of it somehow. And what's really nice, because people know this is all new material, all you have to do to get that laugh is just grab a page and turn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. You, you stare at the silent audience and then just take the page and turn it. And then there's the laugh, so you can. It's, uh, I it's think a at real this point, nice I game. Or just literally be like, "Sorry," yeah. <laughs> like, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, yeah. like we all learned today <laughs> that that wasn't good. Right. Uh, come back. Come back Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have it fixed. There, along those lines, there are certain things you will hear from the stage on Crash and Burn that you probably won't hear at a normal headlining week. I, I made a list of these, so I want to oh. get your. You guys can expand on some of these, or maybe they. Some of you may have uh, s said these uh, already. Uh, well, here's. I'm just going to flat out. Uh, this one is yours directly, Liz. 
that joke is getting worse. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> for sure. And you're like, Ugh. someone needs to take this away from me. <laughs> and for, to, make it, to be clear, that's you describing your own joke, oh, not 100%. someone else's. Oh, yeah, yes. no, 100%. <laughs> this joke is yeah, getting no, worse. I would never be mean to anybody but myself. <laughs> there, uh, there have been comments like uh, on the stage, oh, I guess I won't give up on that one. Yeah. When, when uh, you know, things uh, maybe go better than anticipated, I won't give up on that one. There's, uh, and then I like this one. Everyone's angle is different when talking about the, uh, this is more about you guys writing together, right? Like, yeah. when you guys have your writing sessions, Tim's going to have a different opinion than Liz. Liz is yeah. going to have a different one than Tommy, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know guys normally write with other people? Not really. Just, uh, just once a year. Just once a year. <laughs> Liz, I'll, like, no? I'll get stuck. Like, so, like, Adrian Appalucci and Carmen Lynch are really close friends. We've known each other forever. We all have very different voices, but we know each other's voices really well. So, like, I, I can give tags to both of them, even though we're wildly different, and they'll, they'll, they'll work because I know their voices. But also, I actually say the best thing you can do um, to support somebody is ask a question they haven't asked themselves. You know what I mean? So even, like, that guy who's sitting over here that just kind of gave you a fact – it's like, okay, well, I didn't even think about that. Even if it's kind of obnoxious, because we're not always on the side of truth. And, and, and It wasn't. I don't know if it was obnoxious. It's just, it's just, it, it just I like being a know-it-all. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, one yeah, of yeah. My, It's one of my fathers. I knew that, okay? Uh, it's just endangered is a lot easier than yeah, yeah, most I get people that. don't know and it's in good enough. Migratory That's Species funny. Act of 1978. You know? Yeah, there's no bibliography <laughs> to our right. fucking stand-up. But it does kind of help me, like, even when somebody's like, well, I didn't understand that. Or what was what was your point with that? But, like, I had this old bit about um, I was on the subway, and I had my feet up on the chair, and a cop came on and kicked my feet off the chair. And I was livid. I was livid. It was, like, 2 in the morning. I was livid. I was, like, the only person on the train. And the, the premise, like, how I started out the bit is, like, well, that's – that's not one of the unspoken rules of the train. Like, you can't – it's not a big deal. And I couldn't figure out how to – I knew it wasn't done. And she was like – Adrian was like, well, what are the unspoken rules of the train? And it just unlocked something. And then I started to, like, list the real ones and the fake ones because there are, un, un, you know, unlisted rules of the train. Yeah, and yeah. then there's the ones. And it literally – I was just like, you know, don't buy candy from stain strangers. Don't listen to loud music. And don't pee on the train. But we all break those rules. <laughs> you know, there, there's so many delays and there's no bathrooms. And that just opened it up. And then it opened up to two more layers Love it. just from that line. And all she did was ask a question I didn't ask myself. So I think the, the best part of our rice writing is either somebody asking you to clarify something or even just being like, well, you know, let's, you know, I'm writing with three men. And if I'm talking about something predominantly female, all they would have to be is like, oh, I didn't know you guys did that. And I was like, oh, it's good to know that men don't know that. Let me expand on that or let me give a definition. For sure. So um, I had an old joke about uh, taking Xanax for the first time. And I was in the U.K., and my, my UK agent was like, hey, just so you know, that didn't work because we don't label our drugs here. We use the like the medical name. And Xanax is like a like a brand name, brand name, like a Kleenex. Sure. And so, I w so she's like, so you'll have to define what Xanax is. But you don't want to waste time telling a, a real definition. So I was like, what's a funny way? And I was like, oh, it's an anti-inflammatory for your thoughts and feelings. <laughs> so now my setup has a punchline, and it went right into this weird Xanax story. And that's where it starts to be helpful to kind of get people's perspectives you would have never – I would have never asked anyone in the U.K., do you know what Xanax is? I would have just been like – I, I, it's not supposed to get a laugh. It's not supposed to be anything. But I didn't even know they didn't know what that was. Love it. So it's. I think it's helpful to get anybody's perspective that's not yours or your small group of friends because the whole point is to reach as many people as possible. Which is why Crash and Burn is amazing. I cannot, cannot recommend enough. People come. Uh, this will be out today. So we'll people get out here and come see these last any of these last four shows. Tonight, Multiple tonight. ones. If tomorrow, not. Night, tomorrow night's the graduation show, Saturday night. Yes. Saturday, Saturday night, we uh, 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 rule number three, uh, have to be off book. So we have to have it memorized by uh, Saturday night. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's the graduation <laughs> night. <laughs> we get to leave. With, hopefully leave with a diploma. Yeah. And, uh, no, yeah. 20 minutes. That's fine. Yeah. D diploma's yeah. worthless. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hilarious. He just hands the check. And I'm like, I'm going to frame this. <laughs> I have one more quote uh, that was on stage the other night that you don't, you never hear on a regular headlining night, and that's when the light goes off and the person on stage goes, "Thank God." <laughs> Usually me. And that was Tim Slagle on Tuesday nights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like throwing the mic at us. <laughs>
<laughs> it was fantastic. The uh, talent that you uh, put together this year, Tim, strong. I was so impressed with how everybody's it's been doing. Really fun. Yeah, it's been super good. I highly encourage people coming out the rest of the week and hopefully next year when you do it again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have people pitching themselves already? They must like uh, pick me, pick me. <laughs> yeah, of course on, you do. I put on a mustache. Ah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having Thank me. Thank you.